Good morning, PASW family and friends. Happy Friday. It is another behind the scenes Friday. Kind of looks like I'm standing in the water, but there's a dot behind me. And that's very significant for our behind the scenes film today. But before we do that, let's do some moving and grooving. This song is called Sweet Home Chicago from Robert Johnson. In 1936, the song came out in 1936 with a very specific reason why we're dancing to a song from 1936. So I'll explain that after we do a little moving and grooving today. <laughs> I a little shake out. Check it out. Good. Good. So, like I said, I am standing on the dock of a river and the reason is our behind the scenes um, class today was looking at this film, the new film that came out late last year, The Boys in the Boat. The Boys in the Boat was directed by um, and directed and produced by George Clooney and stars actor Joe Eckerton. It's based on a true story from a novel written by Daniel James Brown. Brown. Daniel James Brown called The Boys in the Boat, Nine Americans and their epic quest for Olympic gold at the 1936 Olympics. That's the best mouthful. <laughs> so, anyway, this movie, The Boys in the Boat, is based on a true story about a group of young men from the University of Washington. These are what the real um, team looked like, who wanted to be a row, a rowing in a sport where um, men and women get in a boat and they row like that. <laughs> um, as their journey to go to the Berlin Olympics, the Olympics of the sports game that happened every four years in 1936, they were in Berlin, Germany. So it's about this group of young men from the University of Washington who wanted to go to um, the Berlin, Berlin Olympics. And this is their story. So this is a story that's not fiction, but based on fact. So this is a true story. So these are the actor team from 1936, and these are the actors who portrayed them now in um, 
You didn't have to change the truth. You just had to pick what parts of the story you were going to tell, right? So there's a whole beginning of the book where you get to see him as a young boy and see all of that. And then there's the, the, the actual story of what they went through. And then there's sort of later in life. And what was really interesting to us was the period of time that they were at the University of Washington and uh, taking on uh, sort of three different groups, taking on the seniors first and then taking on the rich. They're all legacies. We're not. Not yet. Row for your country. Row for each other. Row for the moment. Put everything that's stacked against you in the back seat. And we're not likely to be back here again. 7 square your blade before you drop it in. When I first read the screenplay for Boys in the Boat, it just seemed to me to be a completely, perfectly laid out, winning uh, and feel good, you know, story, sports story. And, you know, every now and then a story comes along that you feel like it's sort of, in terms of, you know, like a, a story or a movie, is a little bit almost too good to be true. Well, we meet Joe Rance at 19 years old, and he's about to start university, which is uh, a miracle to begin with because he's homeless, he lives in a car. He's been abandoned by his dad when he was 14. His mother died when he was three. Uh, he's been fighting his whole life. Forget to square your blade, 38. That's pretty good. 
it was really important for us to get rowing right because that's something that you haven't really seen in movies. Uh, it's funny, but it hasn't been seen where you can see them all in exact, you know, in, in the perfect form the, with the swing, as they call it. Uh, and it's hard to get actors to do that, right? You, you have to really train for it. We, so the first thing we did when we cast the actors was we said, you know, if you're not athletic, then we're going to have to let you go. Here we go. Rehearsal, please. Action! The Huskies with a burst. And look at this. The Washington boat has taken the lead. I don't remember when I've seen such a display of raw power. Hey! No! Well, Al Ulbrichsen is, uh, you know, he's the coach of the varsity and the junior varsity team. And in the context of our story, you know, what, what is important is that Al was a champion rower himself, although that's not really brought too much into focus, but he understands the sport from the inside. I'm going third. You did so good today. Huh? I said you did so good today. Thanks. It was it was fun. What? I I, I said it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Down here too, and that one. Over on this other end. Yeah, here on the side too, it's really good. February the 1st was our first day of training for rowing and we were awful and none of us knew what we were doing. To the point where now we push us, ourselves and push each other um, to drive the rate up and to go as fast as we can. And we're all incredibly proud of, of each other. It's Jack and I actually are the ones that argue the most because he sits in the eight, I'm in the seven and you know, the cox is in front of him, and so he, he, we can't see anything, and we're trying to work out. He drives the boat, basically, the speed of the boat, and he's, you know, we go at each other a lot. Eight on each side. Feet and stretchers. Lace them up. Let's take old Nero out. Luckily, we had a few photos. There are only, only prints this big to work from and the architect's drawings. But we knew the basic measurements and um, it, we didn't have premises long enough to build it in one piece. The, the shop we had was 45 feet long and the eight was 61 feet. So we built uh, five seats, uh, five, five eighths of the boat on one stocks. And then next to that we had another stocks, which we built the, th the other three seats on, and it all bolts together. I'm not hating because of the smell. I catch the scent of oil, whale oil, and immediately hear his voice telling me to keep putting it on until I can see my freckles in the reflection. That's how I'd know it was good and slick. So it would through the water like a knife blade.
Spot. It was the dock. It was the it was the, it was the hull. <laughs> the hull of the boat. Where do you want to stay? That's your first windfield. Great. This one's going to be even faster. Look. You know, you can't just say, okay, well, let's line up eight boats across with eight guys, nine guys in each of them, and start the race because there's a current, so the boats all start moving around and they're not straight lines. And there's and your boat, our boats are moving. And our boats are moving. If the wind blows, everything's moving around. You're constantly moving. Um, there, there is not one thing about shooting on the water that's fun. <laughs> Jake, roll, roll! Jake, roll! I'm always impressed by actors that make films, um, and particularly actors that make good films um, and that have a track record of making good. And George has made a handful of movies, you know, a good handful. And uh, I was just curious, like, what it would be like being on set with him. Uh, and, you know, it makes sense, but he knows a set. You know why you're here? My guess is you need someone to help you beat Cal. Now listen to me. Oh, it kills me to say this, but I'm giving you a second chance. incredible actor. He's one of the best, as far as I'm concerned. Someone that I look at him and I think the, the jobs that he does and the way he acts is, is how I want to do it, you know? It's really, uh, it's, it's wonderful what he does. And um, it's just a beast. He's a pure beast. And he, 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 he makes Ulbrichsen really human. Okay, go out. Rehearsing. And camera Like I keep telling you, I got all the help I can. Why? We knew we would film on lakes and rivers, so we had to find the right um, tools. So we did a couple of weeks of testing where we put cranes on boats, jib arms, and uh, we tested with drones, we tested with underwater cameras, and uh, put together a package which we would think, which we thought would be most suitable. And then um, uh, we tested two weeks and and mounted cameras on boats and and um, what surprised me is that these boats are actually they, 
60 feet long, but they're also quite fragile. And, and um, so, so you have to be really careful with them. Uh, Joe Rance. Joe, you ever crewed before? Uh-huh. Row, you ever rowed before? Uh, some, I guess. Um, how much does the jobs pay? Much Pick up your gear. Name? Roger Morris. Roger. We had to build these boats, and they have to be seaworthy, good boats. They have to really work. And so there was tons of things that were complicated about it. Well, I mean, everything was authentic in terms of what the equipment these guys were using. They have these little wooden seats with these little plastic wheels. And so it wasn't, there was no, nothing state of the art for them that they could cheat and look better. Our kids were all wooden oars, wooden seats, you know, everything was, it was tricky. You will be divided into groups and rotate through training stations. When you hear your number called, follow the coach. One through 16, you're with me. The majority of you will walk away on your own within the next few weeks because your bodies will hurt, your minds will tire, and you'll decide that this dream of competing against the greatest crews in the world is just not worth it. Nearing the half mark, the California boat still holding a four seat advantage with one mile to go. Starting gun is up. Oars to front stops. Ready! Row! It was really important for us to get rowing right. Just drop the blade in, Thomas. Okay, well done, lads. Rowing is the ultimate team sport. Everybody has to do exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. No! No! For the first six weeks, we were training. Training started in a controlled environment in this tank where everybody just figured out the rhythm, and then that transitioned onto the river. We get picked up at 6.30. It was wake up, row, eat, sleep, repeat. Wet and cold, best part of the day, right here. A massive amount of rowing on the River Thames. And one. It's also a lot of conditioning work in the gym. One more. It's like having eight people try to learn how to drive at 100 miles an hour, sharing one steering wheel. So when George and I went to go skiing the first time, and they're rowing, I mean, they were horrible. It was just like paddles going everywhere. Relax those shoulders. About four weeks later, they were rowing as a team. That's looking good, lads. We would train whenever we had days off throughout filming. and We push ourselves and push each other to go as fast as we can. We shot an order. So by the time we got to the race in Germany, our kids could stay in the game. Give me 46! Yesterday, we got to 46, which is the amount of strokes per minute you have in the boat, which is what the boys did in the Olympics to win the race. And I couldn't be prouder of all of us. <laughs> For all the people who didn't believe in you! As one! As one! Well, I love that, guys. Please, I want to share what you loved about um, 
seen the clips and learning about that movie. I think movie making is so fascinating. I love being an actor. I love to, get, to take Fridays to show you guys how films are made. So I really like for these clips and interviews that really help you support you as you're growing as actors. But please share what you liked in the chat. Remember, I gave up the character creation assignment on Monday. Remember, what you're doing is um, talking about, is doing like an intro for the pasties. Again, you're going to say your name, your actor name, not the real actor. So, for example, you might say, Hi, I'm Martha Billingsley. On my last film, the, main, the maker of cheese was so much fun to do. I'm so happy to be here. Welcome to the passage. So you're doing a welcome to the passage. So the name of your character, the name of your last film, and welcome to the passage. And that is due February 1st. All right, so you have the Friday. February 1st to record that, get that in. I'll remind you on Mondays. But remember again, the character creation challenge is to create an actor name, like, you know, I'll create a new one. Hi, I'm Sylvia Tichos. Sylvia Tichos. Hello, I'm Sylvia Tichos. And my last film was Chocolate Over Spaghetti. I'm so happy to be here. Welcome to the passes. So again, you're welcoming everyone to the passes. All right? So, anyway, guys, let's go and do another thumb, the 1936 Count Basie. Have a great weekend, and I will see you Monday on Zoom. Hey, guys, I forgot to say that it's February 2nd that your creative character challenge is due, and you can email it. De your video to DEJ class at gmail.com. Text it to 323 364 2478 or put it in the Facebook group. Thank you so much, you guys. Alright guys, love you and miss you. Enjoy.